Okay. So what, what, what we're dealing with is just a what if analysis. We are looking at, it's not necessarily a projection, but it's giving us different things at different times. Okay? So right now we have highlighted the, uh, the, the building blocks to the cost, which are these rentals, uh, lighting, all these we have highlighted them. Okay? Highlighting, you, you just press the control, then you are like what you want to highlight, okay? Then when you're done, you go to what if analysis. Then you go to scenario manager. So when I go to scenario manager, you will see that uh, we've got, we've got uh, previously we have got some scenarios there which are to put. Uh, let me just delete them. Uh, delete those so that we start. Okay. So this is how you, your scenario looks like, isn't it? Yeah, you can delete those ones so that we start from the scratch. If you do have, you don't have, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you have deleted all those scenarios which were there before. Yes. Okay, we've done that, okay? Okay, so now we're going to add a scenario. How do we add it? It's just by clicking add. Now, we have to give this scenario a name, okay? So, what is the name of this scenario? Scenario, for instance, uh, let's take for instance, you're going to go for a smaller venue. Right? So, probably, we say small, smaller, okay? Now, here you can counter check the cells that you have picked. If you come here and click, have you seen that it is able to show you the cells that you have picked? When you click in there, just click. Alright, so have you seen that now the dark and fun are showing me what the cells which I've selected? The ones which I highlighted. Are we together? Yes, in the, not, not in the blank space. Under changing cells. Under changing cells. Are you seeing when I click just there, it shows me that these are the cells that I've highlighted. And I confirm they're the ones. If they're not the ones, I can actually change from there. Okay? Alright? So when I do that, here where it says comment, I can put whatever comment I want. It's your, it's your own choice. Okay? Then when I'm done, I just say okay. Then here, on the second scenario, have you seen that the 300 is representing the sitter? So let's say that I change the 300 to 200 sitter, this event which we're going to have. Then if you look at the rental venue, okay, if it's the rental venue, we say that we reduce the, uh, the rentals. Probably the rentals come to 300, okay? Then when it comes to amplifier, when you reduce the number of people, even this does reduce, probably 250. So, I go to lighting. Lighting also can reduce to probably 200. Then when we go to ticketing, ticketing, uh, those tickets, when you are printing them out, processing them, you can change the, uh, the watch to probably 150. Okay? Then here you just scroll. Scroll down here, this side. So we're dealing with this 150 there, then security, we can put it at 100, okay? Then we look at insurance, insurance reduces also with the number of people reducing, so we can put it at 50. Then tickets, because probably when you reduce the number of people, the tickets can even go high. So it depends. So we can even say, okay, the, the cost of the ticket goes to probably 30, 35 or 40, all right? Those numbers, I'm just giving them abruptly uh, uh, over a, an event. You know that most events, when they are, they, are, they are being reduced in number, usually the price goes up. When you've got two, if an, an, an event is happening in the stadium, you pay less. Then it probably is happening probably at a hotel, you pay more, okay? So we take it in such a way. Then we say, add this scenario, okay? 
Then we say add. You see, the, the scenario has been added. Now we can add another scenario. Probably if you increase. Okay? So we're now going to add another scenario, uh, which is uh, bigger. Okay? Then we check, counter check. Okay? These are the cells we have selected. Correct? Then we say okay. Then in the next scenario, we're talking about probably you are going for 400. The, uh, the rentals, you would have to probably pay 600. Then you've got, what is this also probably, uh, you go probably for 350. We're just increasing randomly there. 200 is for ticketing, the tickets become more. Then you scroll down to finish up. Which one do we have? Uh, you have to check here which cell this one is referring to. So this is B11. So security, we can say, okay, it increases to 250 or something. Then you've got insurance. Insurance also increases with the number of people. Okay. Then ticketing, probably, you might even say, okay, we'll leave the ticketing at the same price. It's your choice. Okay. Then we say, okay. All right. You have seen the two scenarios that we have put there. Okay. So now, in a case that we have got, we want to look at what happens when you have got a small scenario. We just come here and say, okay, if it's smaller, check out what will happen to the numbers here. Right? I'm saying, sure. Have you seen that test? Automatic change. It has to be placed quickly with the ones that we're putting. Okay. What if it's bigger? You click on bigger and you say sure. You see changes. The cost increases. The cost reduces. Okay. But now there are cases that you would want to say, okay, I want to see all of all of the all of them in one one table. In such a case, you can just come and say. Summary. When you click on summary, um, then you can just say OK. It gives you the table of the scenarios. So these are the two. The smaller one, you remember we put these, these ones, then it shows you that OK, this, this is what you get. This is the total cost you have. On a bigger event, this is the total cost you have. So it, when you're presenting now to your friends, you're saying, okay, if we go for this one, look at this, this is what we have. If we go for this one, this is what we have. Which one do you think we should go for? It is easier to present that way. Is it clear? Okay. So that is on scenarios, okay? That is on scenarios. You can even change this. It can even go into a pivot table, okay? We did pivot tables, isn't it? Yeah, you can even go into a pivot table. Okay, I think this no, was. That's, that's, that's clear. So at this point, when you want to check the, uh, the bigger or smaller, you still have to go to what if analysis. Yes, yes, you, you have to go to the what if analysis. When you come here, uh, scenario manager, have you seen there? there? Yes, sir. Then you can say sure. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you can even delete those things. All right, so now we get into formulas. Okay, today we are going to deal so much with the the if analysis, the if analysis. Okay, if this is the, like this, what should I do? You are now telling uh, telling your data to say if you appear this way, this is what should happen. If this doesn't happen, then do this and that. Okay? So we're dealing with what if, not what if, the if analysis. This is where you're, you're dealing with logic and stuff like that. You saw that in the course of life? <laughs> All right. So now, what we are having here is uh, these are. Uh, apps that we have and this is the revenue that they generate 
So this is this is your company and it's producing this or or, or it has got these applications on the market. Okay. Now what I want to find out to say is that if the revenue if the revenue for this application is greater than one, uh, fifteen thousand, I want it to be able to indicate here that this is good. Okay? If the revenue is greater than fifteen thousand, I want it to say this is good in this column. Now, how do I do that? I use the if analysis. How does it work? I just say equals. Then I say if. Then tab. What is the logical test? This is my logical test here. 11,646. 11, now, what do I want to do? Uh, what My logical test here is, I want to find out that is 11,000 greater than 1,500 or 15,000. Okay? So, I'll say, if 11,000, I click on the cell. To pick up the value in there is greater than this is greater than isn't it? This moment I can type in fifteen thousand if I want, or I can make a cell reference. We know this one, right? So I can come and say fifteen thousand there. Okay. So if this is greater than this one, then I say comma. So now it's asking me. We have said if this is greater than this one. What should be the value that I should retain if it is true? That's what it's asking me here. Okay, can we zoom in? That's the highlighted. Okay. So, what value should I retain? Now, I can be able to type in the value, or I can make a cell reference. So, I'm saying that okay, if it is greater than that, it is true. Say good. So, I click on the good. Okay. But what if it is false? Now I say comma. What if it is false? What should it retain? Probably I can say poor. Or probably I can say don't bring anything. So in this case, let's say don't bring anything. So I'm saying leave it empty. You remember the empty spaces? Okay. Then I close it. Then I press enter. There is nothing in there, isn't it? I try to put poor. Okay, we'll put poor. But watch this. I want to, re to replicate this to the rest, isn't it? Then I do that. Um, okay, so, picking the values, the reason why is that we haven't locked the cell. You remember that when you, you haven't locked the cell. So I come here. This cell, have you seen this cell here? 15. We want it to be stagnant. So I need to lock it here. Then I say F4. Then even this one, good. We have to lock it. It has to be F4. Okay. Press enter. Have you seen that for all that are greater than 15,000, you are good there? Okay, try it out, then we'll try to put the poor and everything.
Okay, we will not spend a lot of time, we are recording this, so if you, are, if you have missed it, I am going to do it again and I am going to be quick about it, then proceed, okay? So, I have removed that, alright, so what I am doing right now is that uh, I want to find out, I want to be taught if a value is greater than this, it should return to me true or false. But this true or false that I want it to be returned to me, it's supposed to have a certain value, like for instance, good or bad. Okay? So I'm saying equals if then I tab there and I say this value here is greater than okay, greater than 15,000. Now 15,000, I'm not going to make a fail report. I'm going to type it this time. Okay? So I say, no, 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 don't put a comma there. If B5, or which is that value there, is greater than 15,000, comma, what should, be, what, what should it return when the, the value is true? It should return good. But this time we say very good. Okay? So we say, uh, every time you want to type a word inside a formula, you put it in quotations to symbolize that this is a string. Okay? I repeat this. When you're typing a word in a formula, you put it in quotations, double quotations, to symbolize that this is a string. Okay? Now I say, this is very good. Okay? So I do that. Then, what if the value is false? What should it say? Poor. So, poor also is a word. So I put it in strings. Okay? Then I close. Can you see that I've just replaced with words where I was making my cell request design? Okay? Then I press enter. You see, it gives me poor there. At first, I'd say it empty. Okay? But if I do this, you have a problem. Did I do the. the Oh, it, I, did, I didn't have to lock because uh, all of them I typed them. They were hard code typing. It wasn't a cell reference. Yes, you get the point. This B5, it has to move down so I don't have to lock it. Okay? So, obviously, now that 
has been tested. So now you already have an, 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 a simple analysis of your performance. Okay, that was poor, that was poor, this was very good, all those. Okay? We are clear up to that point? Okay, now you find yourself in a situation whereby you are saying that if the revenue is greater than 15,000 and the revenue is less than 20,000, then it should be good. I'm saying if the revenue is greater than 15,000, or it's less than and not sorry and it's less than twenty thousand then I should be able to say that this is good okay all right so now what what I'm saying that I want the revenue which is in between fifteen thousand and twenty thousand to be stated to be good so, I mean, so now I'm going to put two conditions these are going to be two conditions okay so now I go with I remove that. I go back. Ah, sorry, I'm dealing with that. Okay, so now it says equals. So if so if this which is this one here is I think I should I'll use the and here. Okay? So since I'm dealing with two scenarios, I'll use the and. Now the and allows you to use two scenarios in a logic. Okay? So I'm saying if, then I say and, okay? Then I'm saying that since I'm going to put two scenarios here, what's the first logic? Have you seen it's giving me two? First logic, if this is then say this one is greater than uh, 1,000, 15,000, isn't it? 15,000, comma, then the next logic is this one is less than 20,000, isn't it? Less than 20,000. 20,000. Okay? Then I close it. So I've closed my AND, then I say comma. So which from here, AND to this, this AND here is representing that one logic. Remember that position. Okay? So I'm getting AND and putting it, it's a nesting a formula within a formula. Okay? Then when the value is true, what should it say? We're saying that if it is true, then we say good. Eh? So we put our good there. Then we say good. If it is not true, if it is false, what should we do? It should be probably an empty space. We put our commas there. Okay? Then we close. Then press enter. Have you seen this one is below 15? Okay, so check out. So this is 15,033a. It's greater than 15, right? 18, 14 is no, so it's empty. So now you see that this position, this is where you are able to put your wedding, where you're supposed to put your wedding. So what I want you just to be able to understand when you're dealing with the if is this. The basic of an if is that you have about a logical statement. The logical statement is the condition. Okay? If this is the condition, what should happen? So if this condition is true, what should I tell you? Or what should I bring forth? If it is false, what should I bring forth? Okay? Does, it, does, the, does the if make sense?
Okay. All right. So, so now we move on to another one. So here it's telling us that revenue is greater than 15,000 and less than 20,000 then good. Then if revenue is 20,000 like if revenue is greater than or equal to 20,000 is exceptional. Supposed to say exceptional. Then the rest, uh, rest is value. Okay, how best to explain this? These are multiple conditions which are included. Remember, at first we were dealing with two conditions, right? But now we are dealing with multiple conditions. Okay, the first one here, from here to up there, this is what we are dealing with here, isn't it? But they have put another condition to it. Okay. So this is how you deal with it. We'll say equals. Okay. Are we following? Okay. Equals, then if, then you remember that you're supposed to say and. Okay. So in this case, we are dealing with the, uh, that value there, if it's greater than, greater than 15,000 okay comma then the other one is that this same value here if it is less than it's less than 20,000 isn't it okay then we close it okay comma Then we we have what we have now is that if this is the case, we should say what? Good, isn't it? Okay, so we say good. Then what if this is not the case? What should it say? Okay? If this is not the case, I want it to run another logic. Okay? Now, how is it going to do this? We are saying a value is false. Okay? So I'm saying if, I'm putting a nested if again. Remember, remember the basic three, right? Eh? So I'm building on those basic three. Where there is logic, if it is true, if it is false. Now, under false there, I'm putting a formula, right? Eh? Which is the if again, right? Eh? Okay? So if, so here I'm saying that, what should it say? If revenue is greater than or equal to 20,000, it should say exceptional, isn't it? So I'm saying if, then, uh, for the rest, what if, what, what, what if, what should it say for the other, others which are, which remain? This is what we're going to put, okay? So we're saying if, then we, um, open, let me just type this in, if, okay? Okay. If that okay is greater than or equal to, I think this one we have no problem. Greater than and equal to, isn't it? All you have to know is that you have to start with this mark, to machan, to boy before you put the equal sign. Okay, equal to twenty thousand. All right. Comma. What should it say if the value is true? Except exception. Okay. What if it's not true? What should it say? Hmm? Okay. If, or you want to put rest value. Which, whichever you want, which, whichever word you put there will come. Okay. Poor, we press enter, then we close. Now remember you've got two ifs, so you give two, two brackets. Cut up all the ifs. Okay. 
then press enter. Alright, so this value, let's look at what is transpiring here. Okay, so this value is below 15,000. It's not between 15,000 and 20,000, right? So it's telling us poor. Okay, for those ones which are in between, you are seeing good, isn't it? Those ones which are above 20, you are seeing exceptional. Moment. Now you're you're working with you're working with two if statements. Now the if statement you can even put them more than two. You, can even, you, you saw that where there is the, where we said poor there, you can still put another if statement and build another one. Yeah, that means you have to close three times. Three times, yes. So after you put also that if where where there is another one, you can still put another one. Even where there's good there, when it's true, you can put another function to run. But we'll, we'll get there. But I want you to look at the basic, how the if is. I want you just to look at the three categories, those are three categories. Then understand that you can do miracles with it. Because you can be able to put the choose function, you can be able to put the sum function, you can, all those things can be able to come. But what is important is that you know that you know that the if statement is basic is its fundamental is logic first. Then value if it's true, value when it's false, close. Those three are the most important things that you need for the if. Those three are the most important things. Any question? Yes, sir. The and. Oh. The, 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 there are a lot of formulas which you can be able to use. Uh, at times, uh, and is when you want both conditions to be true. When you want both conditions to be true, it means that uh, what can I say? If you are at Unza and at Ulias, it should say true. Okay? But if you are at Unza or at Unilas, uh, it's another thing, isn't it? So and deals with the it should be true that you are at Unza and it should be true that you are at Unila. But if you want to use whereby in another position they are not there, you can use the or. Where does that, that and here? Where is this and here? You can replace it with or. So if any of these conditions are true, any of these are true, then it should be, should be able to say this and that. You're good? No, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, you have a Well, where you put good, <coughs> can you put a slash to say, um, let's say, another way of. Should we you give you a slash? A color of slash? Yeah, where the, it should pick whether to use um, good or very good. So, for example, if you put um, where well, is put there, you put uh, quotation good slash very good, then you close the quotation. Both of them will appear like that. Both of them. Yes, because it. it <laughs> This thing that appear, these ones, you can actually drag them out in one. <laughs> you want it to be straight.
Okay. Sorry. Oh, uh, like for instance, that is the position. The position, like that position, has it has got a value. Okay. So you, you, it's like when it asks you to say, uh, if the value is false, what should be, what do you want it to be? So don't worry about that one. Sorry. When 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 it's false, it's telling me that it's poor. Remember, come. Let, let me just bring it here. Have you seen here? Have you seen this is representing value if false? This is what it's representing. Value if false. I said poor. I'm supposed to say poor. Okay. So you are saying if. I've just checked the, the formula is okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, the rest of the data that not form, that Oh, okay, okay. So, in, 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 in this case, probably if I put it this way, you'll be able to get it. So, for the rest that is not falling in that category, for the rest which is, falling, which is not falling in that category, you say poor, right? But now, if I want, I can tell it to retain the value, actual value, the actual value. How do I tell it to retain the actual value? When I come here, where there is poor here, I can delete, I can go, aha, uh -huh, B5, right? It was B5? Yes. Right. Okay, so I, I, I type in my B5 there, okay, then I press enter, then you see that it retains the value of the B5. So if I run it down, you see that where there is poor, the value is retained of the cell. Okay? Yes. So yes. So here, remember that if you log B5, if you log B5, so if I come here. This is why you have to be careful with what you lock and what you don't lock. If I say F4 there, I've locked B5, then I press enter here, then I do... Correct. <laughs> and where not to lock. <laughs> so you don't lock anything. One thing which you want to be constantly referred to, like this one, it must not change. The reference point must not change. You lock it. Okay? But that which you want that, okay, as I'm dragging my formula, it should also be moving because they are moving parallel to each other. Or side by side. Okay? Alright. Sorry? Aha, uh -huh, yes, 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 yes. Correct. Correct. If you just, he has mentioned a very good point. Very good point. Okay? We'll, we'll, we'll face it as we go forward. You know that, remember that this, P is representing what? Rows. Okay? B is representing the row. So if you want the row not to change, if you don't want the row to ever change, you just make sure that it is only the row which is locked. That is by saying um, we remove the the locking from the pipe. Okay? So we remove the locking from the pipe, which means the row will never change. 
but the columns will change. So what happens if we do this? Have you seen what we've done? Okay. Then now I'm doing this. I'm removing the dollar sign and I'm putting it on. If you press F4, it toggles. Right? When I'm pressing F4, it toggles around until it reaches what you want. Then I press Enter. Then I do that. Have you seen the difference? Now, now we want a difference. Okay. What 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 you have to look at is that what is the direction that my dragging is going? So I'm, if I'm going to drag it along the collar, the the, the 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 row, like going that way, which means that I I don't want it to change. I can lock it. Like no, stick to that. We, we, these ones we will just get to them to know them. We, we can't we, we can't master this in one day, but by practicing it, okay? By trying it, when you do this, what happens, okay? Then we have got this last one, which is saying revenue, saying if revenue is greater or equal to. So, sorry, before we move on. Yes. Let's say you're dealing with um, let's say names of um, let's say. Uh -huh. Then uh, the NRC, uh -huh. then you want to verify if it's okay, that's good. You can use this formula where you say an NRC has maybe a name digit, so if it's less than that, then it should say four. Yes, 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 yes. Then, yes. Correct, you can. Okay. 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 Alright, so now we are dealing with a scenario in which we want any of these to be true, okay? Remember the O which I talked about. So I'm saying that if revenue is greater than 20,000 or is less than or equal to 20, 15,000, it should be flagged, okay? So now, this is the case. Mm, before, before we even go further, have you understood the question or rather the scenario which is being stated here? Right? So what what uh huh? Oh okay, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so if revenue is greater than two thousand, or is or oh, twenty thousand, or is less than fifteen thousand, then they should be flagged. So, which means those which are in between should not be flagged. You get it, huh? So the ones in between should not be flagged. So how do we do this? You remember the all right, which I talked about. I say if, then I say all where those and. Because we're going to do two scenarios, okay? Or what are we saying? It's asking you to write two logics there, okay? The first one is what? Okay, uh, B5. So I'll just have to type it in. B5 is greater than to or equal to twenty thousand, comma. What is the other one? B5. The same B5. B5 less than okay then I close now but remember that in this in this one I can even go up to three it's 200 I, uh, when you're when you're using this you can actually put about 250 scenarios okay so you can be able to put about 250 but mostly you, you don't even go that far Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 
comma. Now, when the value is true, what should it say? Flag, isn't it? So we say flag. So we put there flag. Uh, right. So in a case that it is false, outline. Huh? Outline. 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 Yes, like outline. Or outlier. Oh, okay. You can put it. Um, okay, I'll just put the zero so that I don't waste time typing. Okay, sorry, just that. Okay, have we seen the formula? So, those ones which are turned to just let me do this. The zero will come later so that you can see the difference easily. Okay, so I press enter. So, this value is outside the this region right? mm -hmm. it has been flagged. Have you seen? Mm -hmm. yeah. so if I do that, have you seen all those have been flagged? Mm -hmm. That is the if. if. So, uh, so we get, I want us to get done with the if today, then I give you the introduction. The basic introduction to choose. And is when you are here, your boss here at home and your boss also at home. Then you will use and because what those what conditions should be true. So if I want you are both here at home and both at home, then it should be and. But if I'm saying either you are at home or at I should use or. All right, let's, let's get over with this. All right, so we have done that. Now, let's stretch our muscles a little bit. Let's try to be more applicable in a new life situation. Okay, I've zoomed it so the other is telling it a little bit. Okay. So now, when you mostly I think budgets are made even before the revenue comes in, isn't it? You project the revenue, isn't it? Like the revenue will be this, then you make the budget. That's how they make the national budget, isn't it? That's why even when they're making the budget, that uh, they say, uh, this year we are expecting this much to be donated to us. Included in the budget, isn't it? But yet it doesn't yet come. Okay? So, in such a case, there are those which actually get to come and those which don't even come at all. Now, there is what you call the deviation. Right? What do you call that? Div deviation? What do you call it? Not, not variance. Deviation, right? So, what, what is the deviation from the actual, uh, from the actual and the projected? Okay, so you get to deal with such kind of scenarios. So when the division is so much, there must be there, must, there was a poor projection which was done. Usually, I remember when you're dealing with products, uh, the deviation which was allowed was about five percent deviation, whether positive or negative. Okay, so now in this case, we are dealing with this uh, this application. The actual revenue was 11,000. The budget was about 10,000. Okay? So what was the deviation? When you're dealing with deviation, uh, you, you will appreciate the position of one in the numbering. Okay? So for instance, we'll say equals, equals this, divided by this one, minus one, you get a deviation, isn't it? Which means the percentage of deviation was 9.97, isn't it? This is the actual revenue, this is the budgeted revenue. So if you divide it, then you subtract one. One is a representation of wholeness, the 100%, isn't it? So the formula is just this one divided by the 
the budget. The budget should be the denominator. The actual should be the numerator. Then you subtract one. No, no, no brackets. Okay, so now what the challenge you might face is this when you try to do it on a different sheet, it won't give you the percentage. Yes, this is what I wanted to add. Mm -hmm. Just the plus minus 10 percent in formula. Uh -huh. So now the thing is this you remember when we could be able to make the, the cells text or number or general? Mm -hmm. Yes, this one has been made as a percentage. Okay? Remember, remember these things which we were doing. For instance, when you come here under home, you see that this is general, right? Then you come and you select the cells and you say this should be percentage. So the value that you get there is transformed into a percentage. Okay? It's important. It can be a small thing. Be correct. Okay. Yes. The cells, yes. If you're going to deal with one cell, just highlight one cell. If you're going to deal with more, just highlight I, I, I them. Okay? Yes. Okay. Alright. So now, what, what we want to find out, what is the deviation? So the deviation could be probably that. So that's the deviation for almost all of them. Okay? Alright, so now I'm saying that if the deviation is greater than 10%, I want you to do something. To say, uh, poor planning or something. Right. So what happens if I want to be able to do that? Now I want to, I'll leave this one there, which means I'll need to make this one a what? Sure, I can still delete this. We have, we have seen the, the what? Okay, so now what I'm saying is this. Okay, what is the logical test? The logical test is this. I'm putting that formula up. Yes, the deviation formula. So I'm saying this divided by this one here minus 1. If it is greater than, if this is greater than 10%, greater than 10%, okay, then I say comma. If that is true, what should it say? Hmm? Uh, deviation is, if it is zero, it was a perfect match, okay? But if it is greater than 10, which means the division is so much. So the less, the closer to the zero, the better. So if it's above 10, it can be unacceptable. Okay? Say um, acceptable. Okay? Then if false, I just wanted to probably return the value. Which value should it return? The deviation. The no, no, that's a, the, the actual deviation which has happened here. So let's not go there for now. It will complicate things. Let's make it simple. Okay, then I press enter. All right. So remember that the deviation here was about nine percent, right? And this one that says unacceptable there because it was greater than. So in the, in the case where you wanted it to return the. You have to highlight that from the. If you wanted to do what? Oh, okay. So if you wanted to return the deviation here, you just write the formula here, which was what? This. This divided by this minus. 
one, uh, one, isn't it? Okay. Let me press enter. This it was empty at first. Okay, so it returns the what? Where I put empty space, I'm now making it return a blank. Okay? I just removed the blank. Okay. <laughs> it's working? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. All right, I think. All right. No, we proceed. Let's let's proceed. So our pros our proceeding now. We're saying this. I now want to make my work even more neat, okay? I want to make it more neat. So I want it to be able to retain some values. This is the values I want it to retain. Okay, not actually some values, but some characters, okay? The characters is that when you're, when you're, reaching, when you're watching uh, Bloomberg, uh, the, 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 the business news channel, you see the indicators arrows saying that they are going up, going down, going up, going down, isn't it? Like the stock is dropping on the market or it's, get, uh, it, it, it's gaining. So they use arrows. So how can you be able to use arrows yourself in Excel to show that, okay, this one is too high or something, or it's got, it has gone down or something, okay? All right, I'll do this. The first thing that I would want us to do is that we are going to import or insert some some uh, characters. So if I come to symbols there, I am just going to symbols there. Then I'll select some characters, probably this one, the up arrow, okay, and the down arrow, okay. Then I say close. So this is my arrows are there, okay. So I'm going to copy one arrow and put them in different cells. I'm cutting it from there and putting it in another cell. Okay. All right. So I want if it is greater than ten percent, it should show me the up arrow, isn't it? It's too high. Then if it is less than negative ten percent, it should show me the down arrow, isn't it? Okay. So I'm saying equals if now I was going to use the and the and if I was going to use the and if I wanted both uh, both conditions to be true. But now I'm going to use two. So now I'm going to use two 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 what two characters here. So since I'm going to use two characters, I can't be able to use the and or the or in the same formula. No. But I'm supposed to put them in the same two different ifs, okay? So I'm saying if what is that? Equals uh equals such. If I go back. Okay. So if this divided by this one minus one is greater than greater than 10%, right? 10% uh, then the value which, when it is true, what should it say? You should get the up error, right? So, are we, so we are go to, working. so I'm going just to click on the cell. 
then comma now if it is false which means I'm going to put another if there if uh, this same one here let me just copy it I'm copying this one eh? just copying it and coming to paste it here it's a lazy, lazy man's game okay then I put negative 10 so it's going is it going to be greater than or less than greater as you are moving it's less than because as you are moving from negative going to zero it's bigger so you see <laughs> okay let's let's put the less than yeah <laughs> less than okay Okay, let's see what it will, give, it will give us. Okay? Should be like less than negative 10, right? So, if it is true, what should it say? It should give us this arrow here. This one. Okay? Otherwise, or, or else, else, which is uh, the value for force, we could just put some empty there. Remember how to close it twice? You press enter okay so here there's nothing just come in so we do that uh, what has happened here what 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 let me see okay so the problem is that I didn't lock these ones they have to be locked so I put my F4 to lock them even here have to lock them. Therefore, I press enter, then I I run it. Okay. So now it is showing me that those which are above ten percent, the arrow is pointing up, isn't it? It's too high. Then those which are below negative ten, the arrow is pointing down, isn't it? To say it is too low. Okay. The formula? That's the formula. <laughs> if negative ten, because um, I'm dealing with the values which are also below negative, below, be, below zero, which is negative. Yeah, but the should just be below zero. No, no, I, I'm saying... No, no. Remember that what we are checking for here is the deviation. What is the deviation? So we're saying that the axis. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Then it should be flat. So with this formula, do we foresee a situation where a negative two goes, the arrow goes up? No, no, no. Because you have, you have, in the formula you have excluded oh, okay. it. Yes. Because it's on the medium where we yes. expect. Uh -huh. Yes. Correct. Because where is this space here? If I put good, you will see that good. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, you plug it. Correct. Okay, so here we can even say just good. When we put good there, press enter, which means every, everywhere where there is no arrow, uh, good will be replaced there. Okay? Yeah, or acceptable. Correct. It's just a choice of words that you want there. Okay! Ah! In four minutes, we can't do basic, uh, basic, uh, match and, uh, index, yes.
But let me see, let me see. Two minutes, central. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll rush it too much. Okay. Let's just have questions here before we do that. If not, we can start to prepare our minds for SPSS. <laughs> Sorry? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I have the content right now, so I will share it. Okay, okay? No, if you can be able to ask, then if I can be able to tell you more. Okay. Okay. Why are we not here so I can quickly show it to you? Don't mind the symbols, right? The symbols are just holding a pen. Then you're just clicking on them to draw them into the form. Thank you. 